This episode of the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast is supported by our friends at Fairfax and Favour. And we wanted to tell you a little bit more about their extraordinary story. It was a story that began back in 2012 when two friends made a rather ambitious pact to combine their middle names and launch their very own footwear brand. They were actually funded by shifts at the local pub and they then took a once in a lifetime trip to Spain to find a factory that would produce luxury goods that would help kickstart the dream. From storing their precious new wares in a loft, launching on the show circuit and pursuing that dream, the Fairfax and Favour vision has since exploded and there's a range now that includes bags, clothing, boots and sandals. The luxury shoe giants have an array of awards, including last year a Lloyds Bank Business Excellence Award and they're passionate about raising money for charity and have already donated over half a million pounds to really worthy causes. Their story continues but for more information go and visit their website fairfaxandfavour.com. Oh god it's so exciting. Happy Hail Bob Day. It is a happy Hail Bob Day. That was Arilo coming in for competition. Eventing manager is back. Best show that we have, alphabetty spaghetti. Keyboarding quality horses. I mean, you're a bit of an eventing geek, just like us. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast, and listeners, another week, another preview show. The big shows just keep on coming for you because week it is the first uh, Nations Cup of British soil. And it is how to fall in Norfolk. So we want to take a look at the three-star long format, which last year was a class that really highlighted some incredible form that came to the light later on in the season. So looking at that as well as maybe a little look at Babaroko over in Poland. So lots coming up for you. And I have wrestled back onto the podcast. Hey, Russell, good to have you with us. I'm now I'm happy to be back it's uh, another weekend like you say of action and there's some good horses here yeah it's been a funny old week because we have Kentucky badminton protoni and then all of a sudden we're like come up for air regroup and it feels like we have got the next wave of sort of big sort of spring almost heading into summer target our long is on the horizon as is Le Moulin we've got Arkin coming up as well and so It was quite refreshing to actually look at the four-star fields for Houghton and see a little bit of a mix-up to some of the fields that we've seen earlier on this year, which was quite pleasant. So we'll hopefully be able to pick out some horses for you listeners to follow. Um, It's a big old field. I mean, there's, I think, 98 in the lineup. So all of them, but we will pick out one or two for you to keep an eye on. Rosie, you kick things off. Who caught your eye in the four-star short? I think it's quite an obvious one, but um, Brookfield quality in Piggy March. I mean, he's always blessing being the bridesmaid, I'd say. Never quite the bride with Brookfield Innocent. But I think now's his time to shine. I think they're well capable of a very low dressage score. A best at four star has been 21.7 at Aston the Wolves, which we know was quite low scoring anyway. But they also have other results down in the low 20s. So they're definitely capable of that. They were 12 at that very competitive Thorsby at the start of the season. No, I think that they've got a real shout this weekend and now's his time to shine. Do you know what? It's funny, actually, because I was chatting to his owners, John and Chloe Perry and Alison Swinburne at, I can't remember where it was now, possibly Badminton. And, and we did sort of say he's really come into his own this year. Uh, he is brown and bound for the long format four star. I think they they considered Le Moulin and Piggy said, I want to take him to Brownham, um, which is you know, tough, meaty, or we could well see him maybe even at Burley later on in the year. So very exciting to see him. The one that caught my eye, I think there's some really nice young horses and young riders coming through. So you've got the likes of Heidi Coy with a number of her rides. Uh, She's got Helenza, she's got Russell Fed as well, who is her ride in the Nation's Cup. And um, Heidi is just one of those riders that actually loved it. She was so consistently good at the four-star level she had three horses she's a young jockey trying to make a name for herself at that level and she was sort of turning up event after event putting in more and more top 10 finishes and then by sort of comparison she's had a quieter start to this year she broke her collarbone at Burnham Market um, but I think it's brilliant to see her back and I would expect a a good weekend for her here so I'm looking forward to seeing her Um, who else for you Rosie stood out? Cooley Rosalyn and Oliver Townend. The mayor has the most incredible international record. Um, I don't think she's been outside the top 10 internationally. 
other than Burnham Market, where I know she had a hiccup cross country and decided to retire. So that's her that's her one blip on the record. But I mean, she is really, really incredible, can easily get down into the mid 20s. I'm really excited to see them go and tackle the four star this weekend because I think she really is a horse for the future and could be one to maybe try and contend with the dressage record at Houghton, which is 21.5 by Mark Todd back in 2012. Love a dressage record. Who was that on? NZB Campino. Oh, kinky. Okay. I actually have to say Cudi Rosalind is a great shout because when we mentioned the form of the three star long last year, this was the horse that finished runner up. And it was a really, really hot three star that is a lot DHI Ross Cantor won. Paul Park Sarko were also on the podium behind Oliver and Cudi Rosalind. But essentially, the form was really, really franked from this um, three star long last year. And a few of those are coming back to step up to the four star level this time. Interestingly, at Burnham Market, it was the horse's first international cross-country problems. It was the fence that, you know, there was the angled rails over the ditch that was a little bit in the vicarage um, ditch at Badminton. Yeah. And it was the, the mayor's first four-star, and she just said, no, don't understand. And he elected to retire, having had a couple of run out there. So it was a little bit unusual. I think he'll be looking to put that behind him. You can't doubt Oliver's competitiveness. So he is looking for four-star win number 37. Only one rider has more. That is Michael Young. Of course it is. You know, if in doubt, if you don't know the answer to the question, just say Michael Young and you could well <laughs> be right. So yeah, very good shout. Um, one horse I'm really looking forward to seeing. If anybody is going to Houghton, make a note of how for his show jumping round. Our very own Kitty King's Sailor Lan, who was her ride for the Olympic Games in Rio. And he is the coolest horse. And he is such an incredible jumper. You know, watch him show jump. And this is really his level now. You know, he doesn't do the long formats anymore. He loves the short formats. He can be very capable of a, a sort of a mid-20s dressage and can finish on it. He's had a couple of good runs at Boston Open Intermediate to start his season at Siren to finish second in both of them. I think Kitty would fancy her chances of, of going one better and certainly finishing on the podium. They were another that stood out for me. Um, Come on, Rosie, else caught your eye? Um, Moonlight Charmer and Laura Collett. Um, I think this is this horse's first four star, that they went to Houghton last year in the three star, and I think they were third on a 29.9 FOD. Um, he's come out well this year. He was third in Siren Sester Advanced, behind Kitty King and Sailor Lan, actually, and Alyssa Yallop and Invictus. But no, really, really smart horse for Laura. I think that it will be a great first four star for them. Um, and I'm looking forward to to seeing how he gets on because he's only nine. I'm hunting with the Beaufort for the winter um, to really try and give him the, the hunger for, for the cross country side of things. You know, Laura actually had a day's hunting on him and I think thought she was riding an entirely different horse. Um, Beanie Sturgis hunted him with Beaufort. And I think, let's just say Beanie is a is a very, very good lady to follow across the country. And I think Laura had the best day heading out with him. But it was just interesting that, you know, even some of these horses that are competing up the level, sometimes you kind of get of saying, you know, what can we do to really make them kind of enjoy this job and love this job what gives them the because they've got to really really want to do it Getting step up to four star is a, a sort of a big testing point um Houghton is flat twisty so it would be very very different the likes of Chatsworth and watch this space but definitely one to keep an eye on I think Laura will be really hoping that it has made all the difference because she is very excited about him uh for the future I will give you a couple more I have to say, um, Tom McEwen's got a couple in here. Dream Big, who was top 10 at Blair in the long format four-star last year. Uh, Flash Cooley, Gemma Tassel, who were brilliant in the top 10 at Chatsworth and is a Brahman bound. So they ran fast enough at Chatsworth. And a lot of these horses will be having their last run before their, their next big target, whether it be um, potentially Brahman, potentially Le Moulin. So you just always wonder how much the handbrake will be on, but... He's a really, really cool little horse and definitely one to look out for. Frankie Blue has a couple of nice rides. Billy Champagne is one that I really like and the aim is for him to be headed to Burley later on this year. So um, we'll be stepping up to five star. They will also be one of those going to Bramham. But Scalisi actually makes his debut for the Italian team in the Nations Cup with Alamite. 
I'm pretty certain I'm right in saying this next racehorse and it has been really interesting to see come up the level. So it's always nice to see those horses having such a brilliant second career. Anybody else, Rosie, in the four star before I get you to give me a podium? We've mentioned most of the the really strong contenders. I mean, I think Phoebe Locke needs a mention on uh, Picador because she's part of the Nations Cup team. I think she's got two rides here, actually. But um, Picador, 19 years old and just still pulling it out of the bag for her. I think he was second last weekend. And yeah, I think they're ones to watch because he's he's really cool. Really cool. Oh, Picador, he is literally the most fun one in Stragon a couple of years ago. Go on then, Rosie. Who is on your podium? Who wins? I'm going to say the win is Brookfield Quality, Piggy March. Um, in second, I'm going to say Sailor Land, Kitty King. And third, Oliver Town and Cooley Rosalind. And my dark horse, I'm going to say Felipe, Georgie Spence. Okay, nice. That's been a really, really nice haul coming up the levels. Um, okay. I was basically to go almost the same. I think the win goes to that Brookfield quality. Second will be Kitty and Sailor Lamb. Heidi Coy and Russell Z to be third. Um, and then my dark horse is going to be Phoebe Locke and Bellagio Decliange. Picador would probably be the obvious pick, but I really like him. He's a really stunning chestnut and one that she is very excited about to see actually Caroline Martin who is coming over here to be based uh, I think well she's over here now with Andrew Nicholson for the summer so we're going to be seeing a lot more of her um, she's usually over in the States Island with Captain Jack is in the team for the US alongside uh, Cornelia Dorr who is another young rider based over here I think Cornelia is McNabs um, Daytona Beach is her ride so that is the four star now the three star as we say it produced some real stuff is a lot DHI was a winner and he obviously went on to be very very competitive for the eight and nine year old class at Blenheim ultimately wasn't B but then we saw him last week with a very good top 10 finish at Chatsworth on his four star debut so it, it's a really nice hunting ground for some of those horses that we will see maybe at Blenheim maybe at Leon Danger there's a few in there that could be headed there so I'm interested to see who might be the sort of horses that we're we're talking about this time uh, next year. So Rosie, I'll let you start. Is there anybody that stood out for you? Um, looking through, there's actually quite a lot of good horses here. I know that um, Molly Summerland's here with Flo Seven, Flo Seven, who's been a you know really great young horse for her. Interestingly, I saw him jump actually at Rockingham at the weekend because he he's a incredible looking horse he's so leggy um he's beautiful and he just finds the show jumping phase that little bit tricky and he sort of finds the distances come up a little bit tight for him so I'll be interested to see how he jumps on the final day or of a three day as well because actually you know that's something we we have seen do on a couple of occasions but not at the three star level yet so very very much looking forward to to that yeah, I think he's he's definitely got a lot of potential. I mean, Molly loves her dressage and you can clearly see with all his scores and right down into the low 20s. He's got loads of potential there, brave cross country. But like you say, show jumping is just his his weak point at the moment. But um, my other horse I quite like the look of was Freestyle R and Tallulah Bartlett. Um, I think this is their okay, first, yeah. first three star together. They went round Siren Sester Advanced. Another nice combination. She's recently taken on the ride. I think she took on the ride in 2021. So they're still just kind of getting to know each other. But um, they won at Osberton in the two star on a 26.8 FOD. And I, yeah, I think they've got a lot of future promise. And yeah, I just really like the look of them heading into this three star. We have got one for Eliza Stoddart, actually. And it's a horse that he, she is really excited about in Codebreaker. And it's a horse that I think won one of the Burley Young Event horse classes coming up through the levels. I think the five-year-old final a few years ago. She's got Codebreaker and also De Pleasure is another to look out for. But Codebreaker, an eight-year-old. Oliver Townend got Caunton first class and I think possibly one other ride as well. I'll just double check it for you listeners because I'm searching, I'm scrolling. Got Crazy De Loire as well. Look out for them. And let's be honest, He's massively competitive, isn't he? So the other one, Holly Woodhead, who had quite a year coming back from injury, she 
got some really nice horses in there actually, um, including I think Vinicia B, who is a really, really smart up and coming horse for her. So looking forward to seeing her really back. Um, one more, Georgie Campbell, Darcy De La Rose, another really up, talented up and coming young horse. So anyway, I'm basically listeners. I could just list a whole host of very, very good young horses and riders. It, it's one of those classes that really sees some new names. Um, now, one of the other things about Houghton is the young riders under 21, three star. So it's a long format, same as the normal three star, but it is for the under 21s. And we'll see, I think, a, a number of riders who we will see at the Young Rider European Championships at the end of July. Um, and some really talented jockeys on some very good horses. And so Call Me Cooley, Molly Faulkner, they're in there. They had that brilliant result at Blenheim last, more than qualified. At Quarryman, who was produced actually by Lizzie Boff, Daisy Proctor now has the ride. Um, Georgia Bartlett has got um, a very, very good chance in Jalba O. Really, really nice combinations in the under 21. I really like the look of Diamond Bobby and Jess Rimmer. Um, they've had some success at Freestyle last year. They were just outside the top 20 at Hartbury and they were seventh at Bicton Freestyle last year. They've had some good prep runs at Thorsby and Sirencester where they were ninth at Thorsby and sixth at Sirencester. And I know Jess's mum, Jo, she competes at Five Star, but Jess has actually spent a year with William Fox Pitt training. And she says that's really helped this horse's show jumping because it was his weak phase, but um, yeah, transformed his show jumping. And I think she's got a really good shout, as well as Tarka Abraham and Vamoose. Uh, Tarka off at university, but another one who has produced this horse up through the levels and has had success at the freestyle level. They were second at South of England three star at the end of last year and had some good prep runs also at Thorsby and Sirencester, third at Sirencester there on 25.9. So it's exciting. It is. And do you know what? They're always super, super competitive. Okay, let's talk Babaroko and Poland listeners, because just a little sneaky inside at the entries, because we just thought it would be worth flagging up a few stories that could be coming out of Babaroko this weekend. And we've seen some really, really good entries there in the past. I think Oliver Town entered Kilnebrad and Evo out there once. Um, So it's always one that you sort of look to at the end of May to see some real stars of eventing over in Europe. And I would just bring... Two horses, particularly, uh, just to the forefront. One is in the four-star long, and it is Ingrid Klimka, Equestro Siena, just do it, who are looking for a, a qualifying run at the four-star long level. They obviously went very well for a podium finish at Protoni in the test. Um, but this horse now is really the one that I think a lot of people are looking at. Could we see Ingrid on for those world championships in Protoni? Um, so this weekend is a big weekend for them. They've got to tick that qualifying box. And of course, SAP Hale Bob, um, having picked up a beat in Protoni, uh, that has ruled him out. So very much all eyes on Stella. And she's a horse that can do 25 in the dressage or a 45. Um, one that isn't as consistent as we are used to seeing Ingrid. But I mean, let's be honest, Ingrid is an absolute genius. So we'll look out for that. And the other one, actually a horse in the four-star short, Sandra Ocean Power, who was one of the most highly rated eight-year-olds coming out of last year. I think it actually might have been the most highly rated eight-year-old. Very talented um, and is very much a star of the future for him. Keep a sneaky eye on them, listeners. And I think there is a live stream for Babaroko. Uh, there usually is. If you go to their website, you'll be able to find out details. So go and take a look. Um, one last thing to mention before we wrap this show up, Rosie, uh, because you and I are both join a call, but we're skiving listeners to bring you the, the Houghton preview show. The Event Horse Own Association Members League, obviously we've had one leg We'll now turn to Houghton, where there'll be some horses looking to pick up points. There's a couple that did pick up very good points at Chatsworth already. So we could see that leaderboard shuffle significantly. So look out for that. Very exciting. Um, but Rosie, it has been a pleasure to have you back on the show. We have got lots of exciting things coming up on the podcast over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's really exciting. And um, I can't wait to, to get stuck into it or editing it all. I can't wait to give it to you listeners. I'm getting excited to just sat here listening to the Poor Rosie. What have we got coming up on the next Fast Reach show? 
On the next grassroots show, I'm going to take a look at some of the leagues. I know we've got BE leagues up and Eventing Ireland leagues up. So where people are at in like the opposition beaten percentage leagues in the 80, 90, 100 leagues. So just kind of a halfway through the season, looking at where people are and who might be in with a shout of winning it. Halfway through the season. Oh, my gosh. That's so honestly. Where where is time going, listeners? Look, thank you as always for tuning in, and we really do appreciate it. So maybe just tell your friends that you love the eventing podcast and suggest an episode for them to listen to. Um, we would really appreciate it. Anyway, we'll be back very soon with more. And thanks for listening. In the meantime, thank you for listening to the Operating's Eventing Podcast. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I look forward to having you back with us soon. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more. Listeners, we'll speak to you again soon. Listeners, have we got a treat in store for you because the Eventing Podcast has launched some super comfortable and stylish merchandise for you to purchase. And there is something for you to wear all year round. There's a baseball cap, a gilet, a coat and a woolly hat too. It is perfect for any occasion from a winter walk to attending an event. There really is something for everyone plus five percent of all sales goes to tiggy's trust too head to stitchedequestrian.com to shop the full range